Living Local Carolina with Katie Turner. Local trends, shopping, dining, and more. This is Living Local Carolina. The following portion of Living Local Carolina is sponsored by Beach Injury Lawyers. Well, welcome back to Living Local Carolina. Today I'm joined in the studio once again by the guys from Beach Injury Lawyers, Will and Greg. How are you guys doing today? We're well. How are you doing? Yeah, doing great. Happy to be here. Oh, yeah, I'm doing great, too. So tell me, <laughs> what's new with you guys? What have you been up to? It's, it's been hard to do anything but work. It's, it has been the busiest month that, that I literally can ever remember. Uh, we've just, we've had so many cases coming in and, and, and a lot of cases that, that we've been able to resolve. I mean, just in the last month, you know, we've been very blessed that, that we've earned over three quarters of a million dollars for our clients. And again, that's just in the last month. Wow. So we're hoping to, uh, you know, we're, we're hoping that will continue. Mm -hmm. But that's a, that's a good trend for us, and yeah. you know, and we'll be able to you know handle more motor vehicle accident cases and slip and fall cases and you know things like that for our, for our injured clients. Now, what would you say are the types of cases that you guys see the most? Definitely motor vehicle accidents. Mm -hmm. About three quarters, I think, would be. Um, and it's interesting, this month alone, we've had three repeat clients in the same month who were involved in mm. multiple motor vehicle accidents. So things sometimes tend to go in threes. I hope not for their, for their sake. Yeah. But, but yeah, 75% motor vehicle accidents. Um, and then, you know, we see all kinds of, of cases. We, Greg and I were discussing a food poisoning case uh, recently that we had. And, um, you know, that was an interesting case. That was one where we were able to show won't name the restaurant, but a restaurant had not stored their meat properly, person gets mm -hmm. sick. Um, they had pre-existing Crohn's condition, so it mm. exacerbated that, and we were able to get to DHEC records and found that their meat storage was uh, like 20 degrees higher than it should be, caused, <gasps> caused it. Yeah, a lady goes back home and uh, really got sick there, retained us, and we were able to, you know, through discovery and, and getting these documents, able to resolve the case for her. So yeah, I mean, we see some crazy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean the food poisoning cases are, I mean it's bad enough to get food poisoning, but yeah. when you have a pre-existing problem like Crohn's disease or, or some sort of, you know, whether it's stomach intestinal. Um, it can be uh, deadly. It, well, it can be, and it was almost deadly um, for our client who ended up spending between three and four weeks uh, in the hospital after, uh, you know, after contracting food poisoning at a at a local restaurant here, so you know it, it can, it, it really can it it can be devastating. It mm -hmm. can absolutely be devastating. You know, but not only food poisoning cases. Um, Will and I, we, you know, he was saying that we were talking a little bit earlier about the cases in the in the last month. But you know, it, it's been things from you know food poisoning, motor vehicle accidents. Um, a gentleman being shot in the eye with a Nerf projectile. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, you don't ever expect that to happen. You know, you? would would you? You just don't think about things like that. You know, a student getting getting seriously injured uh, at school mm -hmm. due to the the negligence of the school. So, you know, it's um, it's pretty interesting and diverse. Yeah, you know the cases. You know the cases that we've been handling this month. Yeah, we should note some of these cases, the school cases, going on for like, resolved this month, but it was a four-year process. You're kidding. Yeah. When you get into litigation, it can really... Yeah. <laughs> the, the wheels of justice turn, turn slowly. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Well, and we're seeing COVID, COVID, that was a big impact sure. on, 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 on the court system. And because the courts shut down, mm -hmm. uh, court administration shut down, and so you had such a backlog of cases and so, you know, the courts are, are trying to catch up, but yeah, it's, it's, it's slow going. It's mm -hmm. slow going these days. So that's why you hope with most cases that it's gonna settle in mediation. And frankly, yeah. gosh, probably 98% of every case filed in South Carolina and Horry County specifically, it's gonna get settled at mediation. But there's that 2% that don't. And mm -hmm. that's why you have to be uh, experienced with trying cases because sometimes you, you got to go try the case. 
All right, well, we're going to put a pin in this right now. We have more coming up after the break. We're going to talk about some more interesting cases that you guys see, so be sure to stay tuned, you guys. Welcome back to Living Local Carolina. The guys from Beach Injury Lawyers have been busy this month, but we're also going to talk about some interesting cases they've seen that might surprise you. So why don't you guys go ahead and take it away? Sure. Um, well, yeah, I've had some interesting <laughs> cases over the years, and there's really a couple that, that kind of stand out. I had a case where it was a, a food product and I think rice, and there was a um, piece of a mouse was inside of the um, small piece. Um, that was cooked and partially eaten, and so that was a, that was uh, that was memorable. Thank you for <laughs> yeah. clarifying. It was a small piece. Yeah, small piece, not the whole mouse. Not the it whole wasn't mouse, an entire yeah. mouse, of course. Yeah, had to have it tested, the whole <laughs> thing, to figure out what what it was. Um, no, m memorable cases in terms of like from a personal standpoint, ones mm -hmm. that, that that I think back to. Um, two, I have two disability cases. I used to do veterans disability. Mm -hmm. um, I helped a gentleman who was in Vietnam, um, who had been denied for. So almost 20 years, we were able to prove um, uh, agent. If you if you were um, if you were subjected to Agent Orange and you were uh, during Vietnam, you're entitled to benefits. But it was proving that he was in a certain region at a certain time, and the documents had been I won't say falsified, but there was some misleading documents, and um, it took a lot of uncovering and a lot of finding witnesses that he had not seen in 30 years, and and so forth, and we took it to the DC level and were able to be successful. And because of such a long period of time, the man was very well compensated. I mean, fairly compensated for what, what had happened wow. to him. Um, the other one was a social security disability case where um, a, a good friend of mine was a judge who, who um, was, pat he, he literally was very sick. And it was his last hearing. He came up to do it in person because it really to tell me goodbye. And uh, oh. my client, um, was very deserving. He awarded the case on the record. He said verbally, Mrs. Client, you are, I'm going to award your, your case and you have this book. Um, you'll be awarded disability. So she takes that information and she was in debt and, and everything. She, she got out some credit cards because she's expected to receive payment in a couple of months. Um, the chief administrative judge in Charleston, um, who still resides in that position, chose to um, chose to deny that decision and re-submit the case to another judge where it got, mm -hmm. later got denied. So then we had to do an appellate process and it took two more years, but she finally was awarded a disability. And it just, it meant a lot to her and it meant a lot to me because it was a true, it was a true fight and it was, the wheels of justice went very slow. Yeah, and I think it really goes without saying that this is more than just money that people are getting. They're getting closure. And, and that is sometimes priceless. And validation, yeah. validation. She was being told she wasn't disabled and she was clearly disabled. And wow. um, I know that, think that meant more to her than even than the money. You're gonna tell me about <laughs> a pet, aren't you? Well, I mean, I, I, I've had a lot of interesting cases over the years, but, but the one that stands out is I was, I, this is a few years ago and I was leaving the office and I was just about to lock the door and an elderly lady came and she was crying and she said, I need your help, I need your help. So of course, I'm gonna help her. And her, her dog, who I believe the dog was 14 years old, oh my gosh. but it was her companion and she mm -hmm. thought of this dog like, like a child. And the dog had, had gotten out of the house and uh, animal control had uh, picked the dog up and, and she was distraught. So. Um, the dog was inadvertently put on the, the uh, euthanasia list. They, no they were literally going to put the dog to sleep the next afternoon. So it, 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 took, it took quite a bit to, to, to just get people to communicate with me. The wheels but, of justice. <laughs> the wheels of justice, that's right. So, you know, we were able to get the dog off the euthanasia list and uh, so we finally got the dog. Uh, uh, we broke her out of dog prison and, uh, and, and, and put her in the, in the back of my car. I have never seen anyone happier yeah. and, and just more satisfied um, with the result. And so 
the next day, she shows up at my house. I was practic practicing in a smaller town with the biggest blueberry pie you have, <laughs> of course, homemade. The biggest <laughs> blueberry it. pie you have ever seen. And I'll never forget So that, that my kids ate every bit of that pie. Love it. Before I could even get it. But according to them, it was the best pie they had ever had in their life. And, it, 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 and that, you know, for close to 30 years, yeah. that, that's the one case that, that just stands out. I love it. Well, thank you guys so much for sharing those stories. It's sure. very cool. But coming up, you guys don't want to miss this. We're actually going to be doing a new segment that we've been talking about, What's New in the Law? So stay tuned. We'll be right back after the break. All right, guys, we are back with Will and Greg from Beach Injury Lawyers, and we have a hot topic or topics to talk about. What's new in the law, guys? A lot. A lot. A lot. <laughs> um, so we had to sort of narrow it down and choose. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, one of the things that we want to discuss was a, a challenge uh, to United States Supreme Court, and it involved an existing law. So the law was already the law of the land, and that law allowed um, the government to disallow someone from owning or possessing a firearm if they were, um, if they had a restraining order for domestic violence, mm -hmm. which seems, to me, seems, seems logical. Um, the, the, it was challenged, though, and the court ended up upholding the law, so the law is still the law of the land, um, which allowed, allows the government to, the way they, if they if the way they worded it was temporarily um, refrain someone from uh, possessing a firearm pursuant to the second amendment if they posed a credible threat to another person. Okay. Um, so South Carolina law is, um, is, is, is fairly similar, the, the, same, the same thing. For one thing, if you're convicted of domestic violence, you cannot own a, or possess a firearm. So that's, that's South Carolina law, and most, most of the states uh, follow suit with that. Um, if you have, um, if there has been a protective order taken out against you, that also would not allow you to possess or um, a firearm or ammunition, I should say, as well. Mm -hmm. And the only thing with that is the, the court sort of broke it down as there, there's a couple of requirements. One, that, that the protective order accused you of actually trying to harm someone, mm -hmm. uh, a member of your household, frankly. Um, and the, what was the second part of that? that well, I mean, it, it included misdemeanor um, CDV convictions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So not only protective yeah. orders, but even if you're you're convicted of a misdemeanor CDV, I I was a magistrate for a few years, and the one thing that people did not understand was even with a simple misdemeanor CDV that you could not possess a firearm. Mm -hmm. and, and again, in the South, we like our firearms, and that was. You know, people had a, had a real problem with it, but you know, that that is the law of the land, and the U.S. Supreme Court just just reiterated that fact. Gotcha. Yeah. So we've seen over the years, of course, of our career, the the take on domestic violence, like it's called criminal domestic violence, but mm -hmm. re really within our profession, it's just domestic violence. It's clearly yeah. criminal. It doesn't need to be defined as criminal. It is criminal. Yeah. Um, so we've seen you know, prior to the, even the Me Too movement and those things that, you know, we've, we've seen sort of a change where victims' rights have been more protected by, yeah, by the government. Gotcha. The, the next thing is, and Will and I talked about whether, whether or not we should discuss it, because it really is kind of a hot button topic uh, uh, around the country, but South Carolina recently uh, uh, passed a, a, a bill that prohibits uh, gender affirming gender affirming care for mm -hmm. transgender minors, and you know w without taking a, a position on it, the you know children under the age of eighteen were allowed to get puberty blockers, were able to uh, undergo uh, gender assignment surgery, uh, and. You know, I mean, you got to be eighteen to sign a contract. You got to be eighteen to. Um, I think to smoke, you got to be 21 to have a sip of alcohol legally. But you know, if you were under 18, then the law allowed you to undergo, you know, permanent changes uh, to your body. So, mm -hmm. you know, it was 
of course, debated in South Carolina legislature, and um, but the bill passed and, and Governor McMaster signed it. So, you know, it, it really goes to healthcare professionals, which is a healthcare professional is prohibited from um, again prescribing gender blocking medications and performing any sort of gender uh, assignment surgery. All right, well, thanks guys for sharing what's new in the law. We're gonna be sticking with this segment, but I just wanted, before we go, if somebody wanted to get in contact with you guys, what's the best way to do that? Give us a call, 843-357-4111, or? Website is www.beachinjurylawyers.com. The preceding portion of Living Local Carolina is sponsored by Beach Injury Lawyers.